Quick poll. How many folks in my audience took some time this afternoon to watch even a portion of the Trump Vance rally from Michigan? It's hard to believe that it's only been a week since the fateful events in Butler, Pennsylvania. From my perspective, Mr. Trump made some very good points and hit on some things that I hadn't seen him talk about in other rallies. And it brought up an idea that I've been trying to create a video about for quite some time, and I want to say thank you to him for having brought this up. He referred to a time in the 1980s under Reagan when things were, at least in his description, much better than they are now, and being a Gen X for myself, I would have to agree. But there was something that a lot of people missed, and I would like to cover it in this video, and I think it's probably going to help some folks understand where I'm coming from in my generation versus, say, boomers and millennials. I think a lot of folks out there in my audience are also Gen Xers, and they will understand this too. It's a hard thing to explain. How many of you remember the series from about, oh, must be 15, 20 years ago now? It was called Life After People, and it was very popular. I think it was National Geographic or Discovery or something like that that had this idea of, what would happen if everybody in the planet just disappeared and nature was, of course, left behind? How long would it take for things to fall apart and be reclaimed by nature and all this? And it showed pictures of all these cities that you know were once broken down. And We had an idea in the 80s about aliens and about what they would do if they came here. Could they time travel? What if they came in the future? What if they came in the past? What would they think of us as a civilization? There's something that Trump said that hearkened back to this. It's truly battlefield of the mind stuff. I'm sure a lot of people are like, this is going to be kind of a stretch, Mucky. How are you going to tie in what you've said on your videos before and space aliens and Trump and what if there were no people? Well, I'll be honest with you. It's something that I think a lot of people have thought about, but they've never really been able to express it. We're going to put up a brand new video over at Patreon the next probably 24 hours. That's going to be probably more the adult version of this video. The hardest part of doing this one was keeping it PG-13. And that's really the key. Back during our era, back during the 80s, when Trump was referring to, talking about Reagan, talking about Anwar, things were very different. People didn't um, censor themselves out of fear. In fact, back in the 80s, we were really pushing the limits of you know what you could show and what you could get away with. And then all of a sudden, the hammer got dropped once world events started to take a turn and the internet became available. Now, if you'd like to join us, Florida Maquis Patreon channel real quick, one single dollar, that's it, one single dollar a month, fully refundable, first 90 days, no questions asked, hundreds of videos, Definitely worth your time. Down in the comments, people will definitely attest to it. It is worth the dollar, especially with no risk. No risk whatsoever. If it's not for you, if you don't like the imagery, you don't think it's worth it, you've got 90 days to figure that out. But believe me, 90 days is a long time. And that is something that Trump actually talked about. He said, boy, we've got a long way to go to the election. People are like, wow, it's only a few months away. Believe me, in politics... In politics, we're about 100 days away still, 100 and some days. But it's something that people don't really think about. Population crash. The idea of, well, gosh, what if not everybody disappeared, but most people disappeared? What would happen then? It would be an entirely new world, wouldn't it? You see, there's evidence for what would happen right now, right here. We could, we don't need CGI and we don't need speculation. We already have examples of this. How many of you have seen the shows where they uncover all from the jungle, all of these old Mayan ruins? Here's my question. And this is what ties it to what Trump said. Trump was talking to Michigan, people in Michigan who were a lot of service workers a lot of government employees, a lot of public um, servants. Here's my question. 
Did the jungle grow faster back then or slower? Or did it not grow at all? Because I think aliens would wonder, how many people did it take to maintain those cities that way? You see, they look like this now. But this is what is speculated they looked like then. My question would be this. Who paid all of the workers that w- would have taken to maintain the jungle at bay? You see, when we look at you know, the colla- you know, what we would consider the collapse of civilization now and all of our buildings covered with jungle, well, clearly somebody was taking care of all this back then because the jungle grew just as fast back then as it does now. The reason we have cities we can live in now is because we have massive armies of paid workers, massive armies of paid workers to keep things normal, to keep things. And if they all disappeared, what would happen? This is my question. Who built the tools? Even rudimentary hand, rudimentary hand tools would have been needed to keep the jungle at bay, blades, and you would have to have some kind of organization and be able to feed people and to be able to, to organize not only the building of all of these structures, but the once again, the maintenance of everything. Look at the, the monumental effort it takes now. It's about the people. It's about the human beings. And this is what Trump was focusing on. When he keeps talking about, you know, that what makes America, America is the people and everybody, whether it's the bus driver, whether it's the sewer worker, whether it's the street sweeper or any public service that you could think of that keeps civilization going. It's about making replacement people and more people and more people and more people. Now, what happens? What happens when people Stop making new people. You see, this is something that has been largely misinterpreted. The problem isn't chemtrails. The problem isn't poison in the food. The problem isn't this, that, or the other, or radiate, whatever. The problem is that people have stopped even wanting to have families or have kids in the Western world, in the modern world. There are places in our world where that's not the case, but in the Western world, what we know, people have stopped having families. Not realizing those little kids, those three or four or five little munchkins running around, we're going to grow up to be adults to fill all those jobs. We're not even at the replacement rate right now. We're losing and we're losing quick. And once the death spiral starts... It's almost impossible to stop it. Once the population death spiral starts, and like I said, it doesn't have anything to do with people are just sterile. People are just not trying to have kids. See, unlike any other animal on the planet, unlike any other animal on the planet, we are aware of how many, almost exactly, of us are out there in other places. Space aliens will look at it like a mass beaching. See, we look at these people show up beach because why did they do that? Why did they do that? And speculate about submarines and sonar and all this kind of stuff and, and magnetic this and changes in the tur- the tilt of the earth and all this. Aliens are going to look at us and go, gosh, it seems so simple. It seemed so simple. It was hardwired into them what would be necessary to make new versions of themselves. It was literally hardwired into the people at a certain age they would reach that there would be this thing inside them that would just, a switch would flip and they would automatically engage in activities that would result in babies. But because they were afraid of hurting people's feelings... Because they were afraid of hurting people's feelings, they didn't discourage activities that didn't make babies. 
it was it's the most illogical thing simply from a scientific standpoint that we have done the idea that we don't want to hurt somebody's feelings during a mass population collapse during a mass population collapse but the people who show images like this they're the enemy see all it takes is a few beers and a few bikinis and a beach and the men will come and they will come in large quantities and guess what happens about nine months later guess what happens about nine months later you fix the problem but because we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings or we want to promote an agenda that the science was in back in the something that trump said back in the 80s the science was in about certain activities being incredibly dangerous and destructive for society incredibly dangerous and destructive for society but yet we didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings and then there was this other group of people that wanted to from the other side of the spectrum that wanted to create so many hoops because of ridiculous interpretations of what was said in the Bible. You have to have a marriage license and you got to buy rings and then you got to spend all this money and then you got this and that and the other. And then, of course, encouraging financially divorce immediately. I mean, encouraging big time because of mammon and capitalism, divorce immediately. The chance of having kids were actually nil when it was so simple. When it was so simple, anybody who was sounding the alarm, anybody who was saying, hey, we should probably start encouraging our young people to get together. If aliens arrived and they looked at the internet after the population collapse destroys everything and they see the history of what happened, they would look at us like we were stupid. You know, we came here to conquer a planet. Boy, we thought we were going to run into a, a smart, advanced civilization that, you know, would you know, be something we would have to work to overcome. These people, we're not even going to waste firing a shot. We're just going to go wait for you to destroy yourselves. And here's my favorite, and this is really what ties it to Trump. A lot of you who have a problem with my channel, images I show here, topics that I, can, that I uh, cover. Trump was 60. Melania, his third wife, Melania, his third wife, was 36. 60 and 36, and they had a new baby. After he had a baby with Marla Maples, who was at the rally. After he had three babies with Ivana Trump. So he had Ivana Trump, three babies, Divorce. Marla Maples. Tiffany. Divorce. On a date with a girl. That girl goes to the bathroom. This woman walks over while that woman's in the bathroom, introduces herself. He doesn't talk to the woman who went to the bathroom anymore, but he ends up marrying her and then has yet another baby. So if I've done my math right, it was a total of five by three different women. Five by three different women. And on my Patreon channel, I made the suggestion humbly that if shit it's the fan, survival tactic, survival technique, that maybe women of a certain age, if they were having a problem finding a mate to, you know, go through life with, maybe add 10 years onto your max age because most women say, uh, oh, 10, maybe 12 years older, that's about it. Try 26 years older, 24, pardon me, 24 years older. 60 and 36. 60 and 36. Third time around for the whole marriage thing. Third time around. Five kids, three different women. Five kids, three different women. But oh man, I showed images like this. People go, something's wrong with you, monkey. I don't know why you're talking about. It's what Trump did. And those of you think that I'm overstating it. According to the UN, the world's population is expected to peak at around 10.3 billion in the mid-2080s. I don't think that's... And believe me, that's going to be with the help of Africa and India and South America. And then gradually decline to 10.2 billion 
these these are numbers for the globe. As far as us here in North America, we are much farther down the road of global population crash. We're going to be leading the leading the world in population crash very very soon. And look, this is the biggest topic that I think has been misinterpreted. The guy when he had the new baby at home, of course, is largely vilified for you know, the, the role of the single singular role in the hay that he had with the 26-year-old, the that is literally the dead ringer for his first wife. And yeah, that's, believe it or not, on the left is Stormy Daniels. And on the right is Ivana Trump, young Ivana Trump. I don't blame the guy. I don't blame the guy one bit. I just wish he would have been honest about it. I just wish he said, yeah, you know, I, 60 years old and third, I just got married and she just had a baby and you know, she wants some time to herself to be away. And I was off at a charity golf tournament and all oh, he was a Democrat here, by the way. Um, and yeah, I met this girl and God, she looked just like my first wife when, when I was young, just like her. And yeah, you know, we, we had this moment. We had this moment. And I, if he would have said that, would have said a word about it. But right now in Hollywood and in TV, and in virtually every corner of the internet where any kind of influence is done, any activity that could possibly have resulted in a baby, just, you know what I'm talking about, is vilified and demonized and seen to be shameful. And this, this is a scene from The Big Bang Theory. I remember watching this and having my jaw hit the floor as a Gen Xer. I'm like, this was the smartest guy she could have slept with. Of the four, there was, of course, those of you who don't know the story of the series, it's this girl, she lives in an apartment across the hall from these uh, two guys, and they have two friends. There's a grand total of five of them that are the main characters. One guy is an uh, engineer who lives at home, Jewish kid. Um, and then there is another guy who is basically a tall, heavily into the spectrum um, in real life, a homosexual, but almost a homosexual in the series. And then there's a guy who uh, has really low confidence named um, Leonard. And then there's this cat. And he's kind of a, the most confident of all of them. And he ends up, in, after a few drinks, having you know this moment. And Indian men are known for being some of the most virile men in the world. And having baby after baby after baby after baby, the smartest thing he could have done, she could have made, smartest choice she could have made is the one that she was the most ashamed of. But anyway, Trump was talking to a huge crowd full of workers, full of working class people. And if there's going to be another generation of them or two generations down the road, that are going to be able to maintain cities like Detroit, cities like Lansing. Something is going to have to change quickly. We didn't have an issue with it in the 80s. We did not have an issue with it in the 80s. In the 80s, we were talking about what's going to happen when we overpopulate the world. Everybody was having babies. Everybody was having babies. Now, now it seemed like the scene is the worst thing you can do. And the aliens are probably looking at us like, what, are, what is wrong with them? What is, what is wrong with them? It is a very simple thing. You encourage things that help your species proliferate and be fruitful and multiply, like the Bible says. You do those things. And things that don't, you discourage those things. See, animals, animals don't have... There's not one single whale out there that could tell you the population of maybe his pod, but or her pod, but not the whale population of the world. I have no idea. They have no idea. And humans can say, oh, if this keeps happening, this particular species of whale is going to die out. People are so worried about that. What happened to these people? I guarantee I know what happened to these people is what happens to a lot of civilizations. They get wealthy and powerful. They forget. They get so caught up doing this and doing that and do the other that you need workers. We're having to import, we're having to import them across the border right now 
by the millions, and people are demonizing that. Imagine the army of workers it took to keep the South American jungle at bay and to keep these roads and buildings and, and all of the people who were working to keep all of them fed. And they had to have been wearing some level of clothing or they wouldn't have survived. So shelter and food and tools and everything else to keep this civilization going, they just ran out of people. They just ran out of people. And I'm wondering if they went through the same thing we are now. It's a simple thing. It's not a difficult thing. Everybody knows how babies are made. But all of a sudden now here, in 2024, something we could have never dreamed about in the 1980s is going on. Something we could have never wrapped our head around back then is going on. The demonization of baby making and the promotion of something that we knew back then the science was in CNN facts first facts first the science was in this was dangerous and it was counterproductive and it only served a very tiny 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 group of people but now it's being promoted in a way that's dangerous and the things that could cause could fix our problem are being demonized Even those who are supposedly on the side of God, side of Christianity, side of side of families, are literally doing everything they can to destroy the very foundation of it. I mean, if you knew somebody who didn't have rings, and you knew somebody who didn't have a marriage license from the state, but they're saying that they were they were married, you wouldn't buy it. You wouldn't buy it. There's not a single place in the Bible that has wedding vows. These traditional wedding vows, all creation of men. All a creation of men. They don't exist in the Bible. Not one of these things exists in the Bible. I'm telling you, if they came from another planet and they took one look at the internet, one look at history they would ask, what is wrong with these people? Are they dumb? So, anyway, well said, Mr. Trump. Well said. Battlefield of the mind. Join us Patreon. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.